Hey guys, my name is Jimmy Estrada, and I've decided to render unconditionally to him. Truth, this is my testimony. I was born in Glendo, California. My mother was 15 years old when she had me. And um, there were some tough times growing up, but I thank God that I had a really loving family, grandma, aunts, cousins, uncles, and uh, my stepfather who came into the picture when I was about five years old. We weren't so. poor, but we definitely weren't rich. I had food on the table, I had a roof for, over my head, and I, and I thank my family for that. Um, growing up, um, I remember seeing things in a little short time that my mother and my real father lived together. And they weren't pleasant things or things that, that I wish I could erase By from the my time mind. my mom got married, my stepdad was about five years old. My relationship with him was not the greatest, um, but I have a lot of respect and a lot of love for him. Don't really want to get into too much detail, but what I would say is about five, six years ago, me and my stepdad, we talked, and it's a man who I definitely love with all of my heart. And I thank him for everything that he Although did in he my life. Although he was not my biological father, he was there for me since a young age. And, and today, I call him dad. He's he's my father. And I never I really paid attention in school. Um, there was only one thing that caught my attention, and that was music. And I was a class clown. Never really was disrespectful to teachers but I definitely was not doing my homework. And I'm not here to, to tell you guys that's okay, because school is very important, and I've learned at the age that I am now how important it is to get a good education. Um, I remember coming home from school, it was around the sixth grade, got home, my mom was at work, my dad was at work, and we always had a piano at the house. My mom played the piano. I was raised in a Christian home, and there were certain things I was not allowed to watch on TV. Um, we never had cable at the house, and I could only watch like two shows. And I remember after I finished watching the two cartoons or whatever I was watching, I was kind of bored. So what I did is I went to the piano and I just started playing with the keys. I had no idea what I was playing. And I remember my uncle had taught me this one song, it's called The Heart and Soul. Um, so what I started doing is started playing with those chords, but I started slowing the song down. And as I started slowing the song down, I started creating my own lyrics. I started singing stuff like, I love you, and just things you, you've kind of heard in love songs. And I remember that I started really liking it. I started really liking to, to play those chords, because that's all I knew, and write lyrics to it. It was, it was like this passion that I never knew I And had. I remember that same year, my mother had got laid off. She was working for the city of Los Angeles. And what she decided to do is relocate. So she sent me off to Puerto Rico. I was in Puerto Rico for eight months. I went with my grandmother out there. Uh, my mother stood behind her and, and my dad and my sister. They stood behind and I went first to start school. It was one of the most difficult time in, in my life as, as, a, as a young kid. I was now going into junior high. My mother was in California and my family was in California. Who did I was now my job. grandmother um, taking care of me, but, but it still was not the same. So here comes this kid from, from LA, moves to Puerto Rico. And I started hanging around the wrong crowd, doing stupid things. And um, when my mother finally got to Puerto Rico, she realized that it was definitely not a place at that time for me to be to be living in. Um, we left to Texas. Now, Dallas, I had stopped Texas. playing the piano um, when I moved to Puerto Rico. Um, by this time, I was still playing the same chords and just writing a lot of songs and writing poems. And while I was in Puerto Rico, um, I was there close to a year. Um, I didn't write anything. I didn't um, play any instruments. I listened to a lot of salsa. And I love listening to a lot of um, love songs. There were salsa really love songs. An escape, an escape to a lot of things that in my past I was trying to avoid, not talk about, ignore. And, and, and we men, we tend to do things, and I think we're just built that way sometimes. We tend to keep a lot to ourselves and not really express our emotions um, the way that maybe we should at times. But music was my, my way of getting out and getting things out and the things that I would write. I was never really into fame and money, and, and 
and I never was really a show off, so I never told nobody about the songs and the lyrics that I was writing. I would keep them to myself. Since I was raised in a Christian home, my mother wouldn't let me listen to no secular music. So the only time I would listen to secular music was either in school, someone took a CD, um, maybe at the house before my mom got there, but other than that, I but when I did listen to it, I was listening to R&B, soul, and, and I did like salsa. Um, I loved R&B, it was just, it was something that just so now I go into high school, and there was a piano. There was a piano in one of the music halls, and instead of going to class, I would skip class and go to the music hall. And I started playing the piano more. The same chords that I knew since sixth, seventh grade, I was now just playing them. But now I wanted to learn more songs. So the songs that I would hear on the radio, at times, I would try to imitate it playing the piano. And I started playing songs by ear. And I remember people used to come by and be like, man, I know that song on the radio. That's that's so and so. And I was like, yeah, yeah. So I decided, you know, I did like the attention. But more than anything, I just love where music would take me, would elevate me, would make me feel like a different person. And like I said, it was another escape to hide any pain or any issues that, that were in my life. And I started writing songs. And at this point, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go to college. I already know what I want to do for you. I want to be a songwriter. I want to be a songwriter and producer. I want to write for these, for these big names. I want my music to be heard on the radios and people to be touched. And that was my plan. And I was, once again, I wasn't thinking about money. I wasn't and as I mentioned money. earlier, I was raised in a Christian home. But at this point, I'm not living on my own. Um, there's no one to tell me when to go to church, how to go to church, none of that. So I decided that I was going to stop going to church. I wasn't mad at God or anything. I was just focused on other things. Other things were my priority. And at this moment, I'm, I'm, I'm cursing, I'm going to the clubs. Um, I had drank with some alcohol, never got really heavy into drugs. I was I was having sex before marriage. And I'm just gonna keep it real, because that's exactly what was going on in my life. But I thought it was no big deal. You see, many times we're like, well, it's no big deal. Everyone else is doing it. Many times we surround ourselves with so many people that are doing the same thing we do that we don't get to see our flaws. So now I moved back to LA. At this time, I'm now 19, 20 years old. Um, and I started doing extras for TV shows and music videos. I and mean, it was just an amazing thing for me. I, I didn't want to be an actor or anything, but I was doing it to make some money, obviously, because I got paid to do it. But I was also doing it to, to stay in that circle of entertainment and start working my, my way up and making contacts. Um, I started going to a school called Los Angeles Recording School. At the moment, now it's in Sunset Boulevard. At the moment, I believe it was in North Hollywood. And the school teaches you how to record, um, and they give you different internships with different people. One of my first internships with was a company who was under Universal Records. And I had to keep track of the songs we were playing on the radio. I had to keep track of CD sales. And to me, it was an amazing thing. I mean, keep in mind, this is what I wanted to get into. I wanted to one day own my own record label, be a songwriter, producer. And now I'm building relationships with these people. There were different artists out there, singers that are well known that I was working with in the studios as intern. And, um, and it was an amazing journey. thing. I'm no longer going to church. I'm definitely not even reading the Bible. And there was a lot of things that I noticed in the entertainment industry that people always spoke about or that was always available. One, there was always drugs, there was always women. Um, and people were always speaking about the supernatural. Different people were speaking on, on aliens and just, just different things. And at first I was kind of thinking people were just crazy, but then I started to question what I considered to be my faith. You see, I still consider myself a Christian even though I wasn't following Christ. And I think many times we claim to be Christians, but we're doing things that go against Christ or watch things and listen to music that is against Christ. But at that moment, I thought there was nothing wrong doing what I was doing. I think deep inside of me was wrong, but I was justifying my sins. So then I started questioning the Christian faith. Um, people started asking me questions and there were so many things that I realized that as Christians, we we follow as tradition. It's not always in the word of God. And I started coming face to face with these problems and I didn't know how to answer some of these things. So I started looking into other faiths. I started looking into to Islam. I started looking into Hinduism. Um, 
I even started looking into other beliefs that people were following, the whole new age movements. And, and I started realizing that there was a lot of questions that I had and there had to be some answers. But during this journey, I'm still doing my music. I moved back to Texas from LA. I started my own record label. I'm doing mixtapes with, with different rappers, with different singers. I'm, I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna build an empire and then I'm gonna go back to LA with the contacts that I have and get a big deal and, and start doing this in a different level, in a more professional level, in a more universal um, so during this time, I have a lot of songs that I'm writing and I needed someone to come into the studio and record them. So I contacted a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine named Carlos, who we both went to church together. He's a pastor's kid. And I said, hey, can you please record the song? He's like, no, 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 I don't really want to do that. So look, I'm not asking you to be an artist. All I'm asking you is to record the song. I shop to different artists. If they like it and they buy it, I'll give you some money. I make some money and I start building a resume for myself. And he's like, okay, okay, I'll do it. So he recorded one song, they recorded two songs. And before you knew it, um, he was an artist. We were now booking shows for him in the, in the Dallas area. Um, we were now pushing him out to different record labels. The contacts that I had in LA and build out in, in, in Texas started giving it to them. And he started building a name for himself. And within, I would say six months of us really getting serious with this project, he was offered three different major deals. One of the deals, he ended up signing with a group of producers, which ended up giving him a, a record deal through Universal. Universal Records. So now he's got a song on the radio. Keep in mind, everything I'm telling you, this is not in one day or two days. This is, this is years and, and a lot of work. Um, but within those six months that he got offered three deals, he finally picked one of the deals. He took off on his own. He was now with Universal, song on the radio. He's now doing music videos. He's now touring around the United States and opening up for different people, writing for different people, making money. And it was just like, wow, he's accomplishing that. And me and another good friend of mine named Vivaldo, we call him V who used to write for um, for this um, artist, which was, at the time was going by Reyes. Um, he was working with me and helping Carlos out too. 